Go ahead and start with your warm up. If you need to pause, you can do so. So you have time to look at all of these questions. I'm going to show you two examples for number four. We can make that smaller by cutting it in half. We have 30 to 54, and we can cut that in half again to get 15 and 27. You need three ratios for each warm up. Here I have three graphs. These three graphs represent the same ratio relationship. What do you notice about them and what do you wonder? You might see that graph A has that same addition pattern we saw yesterday, where we're adding 1 to the x values and 2 to the y values. Over here on graph B, you can see that there's different size addition pieces. They're adding 2 and 4 and then 1 and 2. Those ratios are the same. So even though the triangles are the different sizes, we can still see that that ratio relationship is the same. And then in graph C, we have that 1 and 2 nested inside of a 6 plus 12. And 1 to 2 is the same as 6 to 12 if we just multiply by 6. 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12. This is the first thing that you will need to do in your workbook. It says, concrete is made by mixing sand, cement, and water. The graph shows the ratio relationship between the number of kilograms of sand and the number of kilograms of cement in a concrete recipe. In part A, we are to write an ordered pair, meaning coordinates for a point, that represents one of the points plotted on the graph. Explain the meaning of the ordered pair in this situation. So any of those three points you can write the ordered pair for. I'm going to select the first one, which has the coordinates 3 and 4. You can see it's 3 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. Then it says, explain the meaning. So we're looking at the axes to tell us what that means. We need three kilograms of sand and four kilograms of cement in the mixture. for it to have that correct ratio. We could also say that for every three grams, three kilograms of sand, we need four kilograms of cement. And you're gonna write this down in part A, but I don't have room here, so I just wrote mine on the side. B, write an ordered pair that belongs to this ratio relationship, but does not represent a point plotted on the graph. So the highest they went was 10, 12. But if we kept that pattern of 3 and 4 going, we could go 3 over and 4 up. And that would put us at, oops, I said 10, 12. It should be 9, 12. So 3 over and 4 up puts us at, 12, 16. C, 
C. Complete the ratio table. Include the numbers from the ordered pair you wrote in part B in the blank row. So we're going to write 12 and 16 in our blank row. That first point was at 3, 4. If we go back, we can see this one is at 6 and 8. And if we keep that pattern going, adding 3 to the sand and 4 to the cement, we should end up with 9, 12. D. Scott has 60 kilograms of sand to use for making concrete. How many kilograms of cement should he use? So in this part, we need to look for a multiplication relationship because trying to add all the way up to 60 is going to take us a while and we'd need to insert some rows in our table to get there. But if we use a multiplication pattern, we can get there a whole lot faster. So I notice that these two have a multiplication piece that I could use because 6 times 10 would be 60. Now I need to use the same rows to create the next piece. So I still need to use the 8 to tell me about this blank section here. And I keep multiplying by the same number. And 8 times 10 would be 80. So how many kilograms of cement should he use? 80 kilograms. Another strategy you might try is starting with the original ratio. 3 times 20 is 60 and 4 times 20 is 80. So that's another strategy that you might see. If we were trying to figure out how many kilograms of cement Scott would need for 12 kilograms of sand, this is another way that we could have found that extra point. 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 4 is 16. This graph shows two triangles. You can see across the bottom we have red and blue, creating those two triangles. What are the base and height of each triangle? The first one has a base of 3 and a height of 4, and the second one has a base of 12 and a height of 16. Where do you see those values represented in the table? You can see that in both, they multiplied by 4. On the red line, 3 times 4 is 12, and for the blue line, 4 times 4 is 16. Now find question 2 in your workbook. You're going to use multiplication strategies to solve for unknown quantities in a ratio relationship. You're going to work for a few minutes on problems 2 and 3, and then you can come and see if you had them correct. So pause the video here, try two and three on your own, and then come back and see to check your answers. All right, for completing the table, I see nine times two is 18. Well, six times two would give me 12. Nine times six is 54, and six times six is 36. If I split 18 into three parts, that's also the same as multiplying by one third. If we're looking for a multiplication pattern, 12 divided by three is four, or 12 times 1 third is 4. Let 
And here, if we times it by 1 half, which is the same as dividing by 2, half of 4 is 2. B. Use ratio language to describe the relationship between the number of cups of sunflower seeds and the number of cups of pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. For every three cups of sunflower seeds, there are two cups of pumpkin seeds. Blake's bird seed recipe calls for sunflower seeds and cracked corn. The double number line represents the relationship between the number of cups of sunflower seeds and the number of cups of cracked corn in his recipe. Use the double number line to determine the number of cups of cracked corn that Blake should use with 16 cups of sunflower seeds. Okay, so I notice that we have two gaps here. If I count by ones, that's not going to get me to six. Let's try counting by twos. Does that work? Okay, so then I need to break it up for the bottom for the cracked corn also. If I count by twos on the bottom, two, four, fifteen, doesn't work. What about threes? Three, six, nine, but not 15. Fours? Four, eight, 12. How about fives? Five, 10, 15. Yes, that works. All right, let's continue our double number line. And the nice thing about number lines is that the same scale is used the whole way. So if I counted by twos on the top, I'm going to count by twos on the top the whole way. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And same thing on the bottom, I counted by fives. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So, determine the number of cups of cracked corn that Blake should use with 16 cups of sunflower seeds. He should use 40 cups. You can see that they split six into three parts and 15 into three parts, and that gave them two and five. Then they noticed that there was a relationship between two and 16 where they can multiply by eight. And five times eight is 40. So they don't even need to fill in the whole double number line to figure out what the answer is. All right. Moving on to number four. Eddie is making a sculpture of a person. He uses pipe cleaners for the arms and legs. The ratio of the sculpture's leg length in centimeters to its arm length in centimeters is seven to five. If Eddie's sculpture has arms that are 20 centimeters long, what is the length of each leg in centimeters? For these, I like to start with the ratio. We had the leg length and the arm length in a ratio of seven to five. And I wanna turn it into an arm length of 20. 
So what do I multiply by to get 20? Well, 5 times 4 is 20. So I need to do the same thing over here. And 7 times 4 is maybe 28. So what is the length of each leg in centimeters? 28 centimeters. B. If any sculpture has legs that are 63 centimeters long, what is the length of each arm in centimeters? So again, we'll start with that original ratio. This time it says the legs are 63. Seven times nine is 63. So five times nine will tell us how long the arms need to be. Jada is making a sculpture of a person. The ratio of her sculpture leg length in inches to its arm length in inches is 8 to 6. I'm going to write that down. Leg and arm, 8 to 6. If the sculpture's arms are each 9 inches long, what is the length of each leg in inches? So you might know of a number that I could multiply 6 by that would give me 9. And if you do, go ahead and finish it on your own. Otherwise, we're going to look at breaking it into a smaller ratio. If I reduce 8 to 6, both of those are divisible by 2. So I would have 4 and 3. If I can turn a 3 into a 9, that might be easier than turning a 6 into a 9. Because 3 times 3 is 9. And 4 times 3 would tell us that the length of each leg in inches is 12 inches. But if you could do it straight from the beginning, 6 times 1 and a half actually gives us 9, because a whole would be 6, and half of 6 is 3, so the 6 plus the 3 makes 9, and we can multiply by 1 and a half here as well. A whole 8 is 8, a half of an 8 is 4, and 8 plus 4 is 12, which we get the same answer. It's just a different approach. So you might break it into something smaller first, and then build up, like I did in the first problem, or you might use a decimal multiplier to go straight to the answer. Both work and both get you to 12. It's just a different way to approach it. If you need to go back to any question in the video to make sure you have time to write down your work, please go back and pause so you can get that all written down. Uh, make sure you finish your warm-up in your composition book, and that should be it.